So what should people do? Um, like I'm a, I always say, advocate for your dog. If your dog is afraid of people or other dogs, advocate for your dog. Don't let people force their way in. Don't let people with the all dogs love me mentality ruin it for you, especially if you're genuinely working hard to turn things around. Um, the idea of strangers giving dogs treats goes back to the tarantula at $100 bill analogy. Yeah, I'll take the treat from you, but I'm still scared of you. Thanks, though. Bye. Yeah. So it doesn't really, it doesn't give your dog the confidence. It's just, well, maybe that piece of hot dog means more to me than my fear in the moment. And then when the hot dog's gone, guess what? Your fear is still there. You're not fixing it. Um, and we also talked about starting at a distance and working your way in. Yep. Um, not forcing your way in. So meet your dog on your level. So like when he was talking about an evaluate, evaluating dogs, we do this with clients too. And it's especially when you're training more than one dog. Like let's say you've got a husband and wife and they both have a dog. I always tell people it's not a competition. Meet this dog at, the, at their level. Meet that dog at their level. Don't expect one dog to progress as fast as the other one. And don't expect one dog to start in the same place as the other one. You can't compare your dogs to anybody else's dog. You meet them at their level and work from the ground up. Build that foundation so that you can build the confidence in your dog at their pace, not yours. Because it's, it's like pushing your children to be better at math because you want them to be, but they might need to take it slower. Yeah. So. So we always kind of work at the dog's pace. Each individual dog has a different temperament, They're capable of processing things and getting over things at different rates. So some dogs get over stuff faster than other dogs. Um, you always, always, always want to advocate for your dog. What do we mean by advocate? I mean, stick up for your dog, okay? Uh, if we are in a situation where we can't remove our dog for whatever reason, then I've got no problems asking somebody to back up away from my dog. So if I'm out in public with my dog that I'm trying to get over some of his fear issues uh, and I hear Karen across the store say, oh my God, there's a puppy. And she comes running up, bent over with her hands reached out trying to pet my dog. I've got no problem. Oh, it's him. okay. All dogs love yeah. me. I'm like, no, stop and back up. Right? So, uh, stick up for your dog a lot of this stuff we can we can get them over by just creating distance between the dog and, and what it is that they're afraid of and letting the dog work through it on their own so work at the dog's pace not karen's yep <laughs> sorry karen <laughs> don't touch my freaking dog so on that note so if you're so for people out there who maybe they don't have a reactive dog but they don't know now you know what to look for so what do you do when you come across a dog out in public and you see all the signs of fear well we kind of talked about what the owner should do so now how about what the stranger should do um obviously we just covered karen don't force your way in and this yeah. goes back to working at the dog's pace yeah. so as an outside element you're not in this relationship with the human and their dog as an outside element you should also too be respectful of the dog's pace and threshold and what they're able to handle and not force your way in it's unfair your should you do if you are actually the stranger or you are the spectator or maybe you're trying to help somebody you know help their dog get over some of these fears so knowing what you know in regards to what we've already covered just as a recap um now you're you're on the other side of the street now you're the stranger you're not the dog owner so what what should you or should you not do? So, don't run up to a dog and grab them and try to pet them uninvited. Yeah. Don't be Karen. <laughs> don't be a Karen. Baby uh, talk. I hate when people baby talk. I <laughs> hate it. Oh, such a sweet little puppy. Oh, look at that. So, think about how high up your voice <laughs> is, right? They're good. It's energy. And it's so, it's hard to explain this to people, but... When you're talking to a dog like this and only got even kids would have pet him, your energy is way up here and you already have a dog that is potentially fearful, reactive, might bite you. 
And now they see this crazy thing coming at them with all this energy. And now they really don't know what the heck to do about it, right? Okay, so if that dog wasn't excited before, it's, it's definitely going to be now. It's going to be now. And it might not be in your favor. Um, eye contact's another thing. Um, Stay for, with the dogs. Yeah, forced petting. <laughs> so if you're trying to recruit people to help you get your dog over these things... Ask them to ignore your dog. And I don't mean ignore your dog like, oh, there's a dog here. <laughs> okay, so when you have a dog... Act like there's not a dog there. <laughs> when you have a dog that's getting ready to react, what do they do? Just what you did. Yep. They tense up. They might hold their breath. Their, their mouths close. Sometimes their eyes get big. You're doing exactly what we don't want the dog to do, and the dog is reading you doing that. So exactly what you should be doing is going, oh, okay, there's a dog over there. All right, so anyways, I went to the store today. This is where I went. Carry on. Let the dog just be there. Let him exist with you. So we don't baby talk. We don't make eye contact. We don't stare at the dogs, right? Uh, we don't reach out and try to pet dogs that we don't know. We don't force physical contact. That is a huge one that people need to understand. Yep. Um, so I had a, a doctor, because um, I, I do run Guardian Canine, which is a rescue. A doctor up in Illinois took a dog from us. Uh, it's been two years almost. Um, she was a wonderful dog, beautiful temperament. Lady needed a service dog. <clears throat> Wanted a rescue dog. Got really, really lucky with this one. She was very confident. She was everything that you want. Um, we went out to eat with her and we walk in, she took us out to eat. The, um, hostess was like, oh, I know service dogs. I can't touch them. I can't, you know, it's, I, I understand. I'll, I'll, but they're so pretty. Look at her face, this and that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We're sitting down to eat and the adopter and her dog have their back to the walkway. And I'm sitting here and I'm watching. I watched this woman, I kid you not, sneak around the corner and pet the dog on the butt and run away. Oh yeah, we I mean we see it all the time. Uh, and that was the most. She was a very sound dog. I, I've seen people out in restaurants before, uh, in a booth across the aisle from a service dog. Yeah. And I've seen people like reach down all nonchalant trying to like feed the service dog. Like, oh, <laughs> oh, I'd smack here, somebody. take a piece of food for me, you cute little puppy. That's right. <laughs> no, sorry. Don't freaking do that shit. And it doesn't have to necessarily, I just brought up service dogs, just, or this one instant because she happened to be a service dog, but it could be any dog. So, I mean, if we're sitting outside at a cafe and I've got my dog next to me and I'm outside and she's not in a vest or anything, I mean, you shouldn't pet a dog in vest anyway, that's just stupid. But let's say my dog's just hanging out with me, don't sneak up behind me and come pet my dog. Yeah. That, my dog could be sleeping, you could startle him. My dog could actually be working on overcoming fears and you just made it worse. A uh, number of things. So just, just like we, as people, kind of respect each other's personal space. Yeah. Do the same with the dogs, right? Respect the dog's personal space or their, their threshold. So Stop if, humanize, if, humanize them a little bit more than you are. They're yeah. not toys. They're not things to be coddled. They're not things to be played with. They're living, breathing, thinking animals. And you need to have a little more respect for them like you would a stranger on the street. So we went over stuff you don't do. We went over some things that you do do. So you ignore the dogs. Uh, you respect their personal space. You remain neutral. So you don't pay attention to the dog. But you don't, like Desi said, you don't yeah. overly act like you're trying yeah. to. Admit, like, oh, no, I can't look at the dog. Right? No, <laughs> you don't want to do that. Right? So, um, And you want to, as the dog handler, you want to build the dog's focus on you and the dog's engagement on you because if the dog's paying attention to their handler or whoever's at the other end of the leash yeah then the more attention they're paying to you the less attention they're paying to everything else that's going on around them yeah the less likely and it's a lot easier to pull them back to you if something does startle them and you, you already have really great focus with your dog which i mean focus exercises we'll go into that a whole nother time but yeah. um Step one, in my opinion, for any dog owner is to build focus. So why yep. not do it in a dog that's fearful? Um, it's it's good. You're going to be able to reel them back in faster. If not, 
help get over this completely a lot a lot quicker. Yeah, so we got a dog that's afraid of a lot of stuff. Uh, let's just, again, use one example, shopping carts, okay? Uh, if I've got a dog that's scared of shopping carts or baby buggies going by or whatever, but I can get that dog semi-close to a shopping cart and have the dog paying attention to me, focused on me, looking at me, then they ignore the shopping cart. And that's a win, right? We're... Well, that's a hard one for people to do, though. You're going to say reward the dog for looking at you, but you, you can't... You can't forget about body language too. So while the dog might be looking at you, if they're still trembling, that's not a time to offer a big party because the dog's looking at you. Right. The you, dog's you wanna, still trembling. You so want to make sure that attention. you're rewarding the dog for, for the proper thing, All right? So State if, of mind and right. behavior. If, if the dog's so sitting important. in front of you, looking up, making eye contact with you as there's a shopping cart going behind them 10 feet away, uh, then absolutely reward them for that. If if the dog is sitting in front of you and they're shaking and their heads down and their ears are flat they're and they're licking their that, lips yeah. and their heads down, they're kind of eyeballing you out the corner of their eye. Like, no, that's not what you want to reward there. Okay, that dog is very much uncomfortable in that situation. So that's exactly. not the time to reward. Exactly. Um, that's when we should I would back, back up. up. Yeah, give, back up. give more distance. Yep. Anytime you get to a point where you can't, the dog can't control, you know, trembling or not looking or, or anything. Anytime you get to a point where we call it over threshold, that's when you're going to get a bad reaction. So try not to get to that point. Try to get to the edge of it. And if you find that you've stepped over, it's okay. Just back up. You know, we start over a lot on a lot of things with dogs. We, we Even as trainers with sound dogs, maybe we push them a little too hard and, nope, you weren't ready for that. Okay, I better back up. No big deal. Right? So let, let, let's talk a little bit about uh, redirection and correcting a dog. So um, if, if I have a dog that's scared of a shopping cart and somebody gets too close, to the dog with a shopping cart and the dog jumps up and runs behind me to hide so they just broke maybe I had them in a sit okay let's say we're out in Walmart parking lot working on some obedience my dog's holding a nice sit and some idiot pushes a shopping cart past my dog five feet away and my dog breaks the sit I can correct my dog then like my dog broke his head. I can yank the stew out of him, right? Well, I don't think I would yank the stew out of him. But. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, you know, you want to be fair to the dog. So that's the dogs are act, acting out of fear. So, no, yep. you don't want to, again, you can't correct a dog and, and make them not afraid. Exactly. So we always, we always take things like that into consideration. Yeah, the dog broke the sit that I had him in. But it's to because be they were afraid of a shopping cart. So I'm not going to. The shopping cart broke their focus. So, so there's a time to... Correct the shopping cart. Yeah, so there's a time to <laughs> correct a dog um, for certain things. But there's a time to redirect also. So what I probably would do is in that same situation, if my dog breaks the sit because they got spooked by a shopping cart, I would try to redirect the dog's focus back onto me. So I would pull out a toy or some food or something and start talking to the dog and get the dog back focused on me. And then pay them for, for that attention. So again, focused on me, get them back comfortable, and then reward the dog. Exactly. I think that's it. Okay, cool. We've gone on long enough. Yeah, I think this is going to be like an hour-long video. Almost. We're going to be debating <laughs> and putting it into pieces. All, All right, right, guys, thank you so much. Don't forget to Thanks like and subscribe. He's already trying to get out of here. Like and subscribe, um, throw some comments in there. Uh, let us know what you think. And if there's things that we can help you with, drop it down in the comments. As yep. always, let share, us know. Shares are free. Thanks, guys.